Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality, and in this video we're going to go over the basic anatomy of a playwright test. If you've if you followed my previous video for the set of the playwright, you should be in a state where you're seeing exactly what I see here. Now, if you haven't done that, I'd suggest pausing this video and clicking the link on the screen now, which will take you through how you can set up a basic scale and test pack using Playwright Test. Now, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the Playwright config file and we're going to comment out the projects. And the reason I want to do this is because I want to keep this this video all about the anatomy of the test pack and not cover any more functionality. Now I am going to be creating a future video explaining the playwright config and talking about projects but for the scope of this video let's comment this out. So if you highlight everything going down to the end of the project array we're going to hit control forward slash and that's going to comment these out to save these files. In addition to this I've also deleted all of the content in inside the example spec.ts and instead I replaced it with one basic test uh, and an import statement. So starting from line one then, let's go through this whole test file. Here we say we want to import the playwright test module so we have the ability to create, that, create our test declarations and perform our assertions. If I comp this out or didn't have this line, you're going to see errors. It doesn't know how to create a de test declaration, and it also doesn't know where we are getting our assertion library from. In this instance, it's the expect library. So you're always going to need an import statement to say, we want to bring in the playwright test module and use these inside for tests. On line three to seven, we have our test declaration. So here we have the test function, and inside it we have the body of code, which is basically doing all the actions we are telling your test to perform. In this case, we go into the Playwright website, and we're asserting that the title has the text Playwright. So like I say, this is just a test declaration. The first argument we're passing through is a string description of what the test is. So I've named this basic test, but you can name this whatever you want. You know, for best practice, imagine you're testing a successful login on a page. You'd rename this to successful login, and that would describe what your test is trying to do. We, we then have the async keyword, uh, which just means this is an asynchronous function. We'll touch a little bit more on this now, but all of our tests are going to be asynchronous. Moving on, we have the page parameter. Now, this page parameter is known as a fixture. I'm not going to touch too much on fixtures right now. However, it is really good to know that fixtures are basically the backbone. It's the structure of Playwright. It's how we do things. Um, in this case, the page fixture allows us to interact with a tab in our browser. For example, inside the body here, we say in use page, and then we have a go to method, which is going to go to the Playwright URL. So let's move on to the body of the actual test code. Now, we touched on this being an asynchronous function, and the first thing you see in here is the await keyword. Now, by default, asynchronous code is going to have all the code execute together. It means it doesn't worry about the state of the previous line of code, whether it's executed or not. So, for example, if we didn't have the await keyword, what could happen is we could have the expect, the assertion, complete before the page is even loaded and then you're running into race conditions you're running into flaky tests or you might have a case where your test will never pass if the assertion is always being hit first essentially the await is waiting for a promise to be returned so waiting for the code to be resolved essentially so you might be thinking what's a promise and a promise is just an object that may produce a value at some time in the future best way to state this would be Think of a child. A child has a toy and you're saying, can I have that toy? The child will say, yes, I will give you a toy, but you never know exactly when they're going to give it to you. In this case, you have two options. You can say, OK, I'm going to carry on with the rest of my code and then I'll come back and see if it's been resolved. Or in a test automation term, we want to say, let's wait for the child to give us the toy. And only then am I going to go through and do the next line of code and continue going through with it. 
if I hover over the go to method, you can even see that it's returning a promise. And that's a good way to see if you need the await keyword. So on this line of code, all I'm saying is I want to go to the playwright URL. So I want to enter into my browser, visit HTTP playwright.dev. Now, IntelliSense is great on Visual Studio Code, where I can say page dot, and it'll give me everything I could do with the page parameter that we pass in through. Now, if I knew I was looking for the go to command, I could type in go and it narrowed down the more. As we start to write our code together, you're going to see how much quicker this IntelliSense is going to make our development life easier. So the next line on line five, we are saying we want to grab a locator off the page and put it into this title value. Now, if you don't know what a constant value is, don't worry about this. Just keep an eye out for my JavaScript or TypeScript videos, and we'll explain this in more detail. Now, you might be thinking, well, what's a locator? Now, there's two options. You can listen to what I'm saying, or you can hover over it, and it'll give you a description. Same with the go-to. Anything you're not too sure what it is, hover over it, and it, it tells you what it tries to do for you. So in this instance, it's telling you here that the method returns an element locator that can be used to perform actions on the page. In simplest terms, locators will represent a way to find an element or elements on the page at any moment. In this case, we find it by the CSS class of navbar in a, a navbar title. In this line of code, then, we perform in our assertion. So under the hood, the assertion library used is the expect library. I'm going to be covering assertions off in my next video, so uh, stay tuned for that one. However, in this case, all we're saying is the locator we've just got and stored into the constant of title, we want to make sure that, that that has the text of playwright. If it doesn't have the text of playwright, this is what's going to fail our test. So what we're saying is we want to do our setup of go into a web page. We then want to do our action, or in this case, it's just grabbing a locator. And then our final is our assertion, where we're making sure that everything uh, matches what we would expect. So there we are. We've created our first test. Now, how do we execute it? So if you've seen my Playwright uh, extension video, which I'll put a link onto the video now, then you'll know you can run it through um, the UI just by clicking this button. However, because most of my videos, I'm probably be going to be using command line. That's what we'll do. So you want to open up a new terminal by clicking terminal, a new terminal, or control shift and plus, if you like to use the shortcuts. Once your terminal is loaded, you want to run the test command. So in this instance, I'm going to say npx playwright test. Now, if I clicked enter here, the test would run and it'd run headlessly. But in this example, let's just say we want to see it. So I'm going to say headed. So dash dash headed and now click enter and what we're going to see is we're going to have a no no browser loaded up it's going to be quite quick and it's going to say go to playwright dev and expect the title has title of playwright there we are so that loaded up very quickly and you can see we've had a test run it's give you what uh, the folder location we're in it's saying we can see our HTML report because that's stored in our config file, so we won't touch in there. But there we are. You've created your first Hello World basic test. Stay tuned for the next video, which is going to be a deep dive into assertions.